Hello everybody and welcome to the official 2020 Kinefinity new product release, the English version. My name is Michel from Kinefinity Europe here in Berlin, Germany. With me today is Jerome from Gaffbar Gear over in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Today is Kinefinity's first new camera release since the Mavo LF at NAB 2018, so exactly two years ago. This will be Kinefinity's ninth generation of cinema cameras ever since their first KineRAW S35 back in 2012. As a manufacturer, Kinefinity has strived over the years to make the best possible cinema camera they could make, and they slowly found their place with their Terra and Mavo series. Since then, they have intensely listened to their users, they went back to the drawing board, kept and improved what worked, threw out what didn't work, and added new features according to the ever-growing needs of the professional community. And now, I am honored and pleased to show you the result. And there you have it, the Mavo Edge, Kinefinity's new flagship cinema camera. Before we start, let's talk about one of its most striking features, namely its carbon fiber body, which not only gives it excellent robustness and temperature resistance, but it also keeps the weight down to only 1.2 kilo. We are also very pleased to see a large side screen and plenty of dedicated buttons, which promise to make the operation of this camera more user-friendly than previous models. Now, without further ado, let's have a closer look into the biggest innovations which the Mavo Edge introduces. First, let's explore the most obvious feature, which is the new 8K large format sensor. Once again, it is a full frame sensor with dimensions of 36 by 24 millimeters, so exactly the same size as the Mavo LF. The aspect ratio is 3.2 at open gate, and it's almost 45 million pixels. So the camera is not only a high-density pixel monster which can shoot all the way up to 8K resolution, but the camera is also very capable of shooting high FPS. In this case, the camera can shoot all the way up to 75 FPS in a 2.39 aspect ratio and 60 FPS in a DCI resolution. Just like its predecessors, the Mavo Edge is also capable of oversampling and cropping of the sensor. Oversampling is when you take the full sensor resolution and, and downgrade it inside the camera down to smaller resolution like 6K and 4K, still with the full frame sensor aspect ratio. And crop functions, of course, is when you crop to smaller sizes of the sensor like Super 35, etc. With that, we can say that the Mavo Edge with its 8K large format sensor includes the Mavo LF, the Mavo and the Terra 4K inside a single camera in terms of the resolutions that it's capable of recording. All right, next up we have a latitude of over 14 stops. Even though it's a CMOS sensor, the readout time with 12 milliseconds is so fast that the rolling shutter effect is very minimal. And um, that's not everything. By cropping into the sensor, uh, readout times are even greatly more reduced, leading to such fast uh, readout times like 9 milliseconds, which will cause barely any jello effect. The Mavo Edge sensor also has dual native ISO, with two base ISO, one at 800 and one at 3200. This allows you to achieve even more pleasing shadows with a wider range of usable ISOs offering lower signal-to-noise ratios for overall cleaner images. This combined with the onboard oversampling feature will even further enhance this effect. This beautiful full-frame 8K canvas has unlimited options for aspect ratios. For instance, starting up with the open gate resolution, which is 1.5 aspect, ideal for anamorphic shooters without losing too much real estate of the full frame sensor. Then we have the DCI uh, resolution, which is called 1.89, which is perfect for cinema. And we have, of course, scope and all other resolutions. Kinefinity is notorious for adding a lot of different resolutions for different needs. All right, very exciting features of this new sensor. Here, just a quick little summary, and then we move on. 
All right, now, in order to process these 8K data rates, the Mavo Edge has an all new image sensor processor built in, which will record, as we will see in a moment, to a brand new system of record media. Next up, let's talk codecs. Just like its predecessors, the Mavo Edge will have full ProRes recording capabilities. We have 4x4XQ, 4x4, 422HQ and others. In addition to this, we have a brand new feature implemented in the Mavo Edge, which is the H.264 proxy codec recording. Lately, ProRes came up with an all new codec, which is capable of recording RAW, which is the full mosaic of the image sensor. We call it ProRes RAW and Kinefinity will have this codec inside the camera. So the camera is capable of recording ProRes RAW all the way up to 8K. And with ProRes RAW being ProRes, we finally have a RAW codec which is supported by all major post-production softwares. The magic about this ProRes RAW 12-bit codec is that it's not only capturing more visual data of the image sensor than, for example, uh, the 444XQ ProRes codec, but it's also smaller. So to conclude, ProRes RAW is not only capturing more image data out of the sensor, but it's also a more efficient codec than any other high-grade codec on the market. So like we said before, the Mavo Edge is capable of recording H.264 proxies, which have a resolution of 1080p at 8 megabit per second, which will allow you to record the smaller proxy at the same time as your RAW codec, for example, which will save you time in the post-production. I should mention though that the proxy recording is only supported below 30 frames per second. If anyone is concerned editing 8K footage on your computer, which for most workstations is maybe out of your reach, H.264 uh, encoding will offer a great option for offline editing. So that would mean that you could edit all the footage you've shot on a very low resolution on your laptop and then in the end if the edit is done you can relink it back to the 8K uh, resolution and get the highest quality out of it. So even for those users there's a great option to still being able to deliver in 8K but not at the cost of uh, stuttery playbacks or other CPU related issues. Alright next up let's talk about the third element in our production ecosystem which is the recording media. With the Mavo Edge, Kinefinity introduces an all-new recording media, which is called the Kinemag Nano. Kinemag Nanos are based on NVMe M2 media cards with a 50% smaller size and data rates support up to 10 gigabit per second. M2 cards are not only way smaller than the traditional SSD 2.5 inch cards, but they're also multiple times faster, keeping up with the 8K resolution the camera is capturing. So with the Kinemag Nano, Kinefinity not only introduces faster and smaller record media, it also reintroduces a feature which we know from their very first camera, which is the dual slot for record media. This will allow you to record either the same clip simultaneously on two separate media cards, offering you a backup in case of corrupted files or SSD failure. And on the other hand, you can record your raw codec on one card and your proxy codec on the other card separately. All right, next up, another highly anticipated feature which Kinefinity was able to implement into the Mavo Edge, which is the built-in electronic NDs. With this, you will have the option of either a clear optical element or an electronic ND optical element with a light reduction of two to seven stops. A lot of uh, cinematographers, including me, are craving for an internal ND option. But the issue about eternal END, which is an electronic filter, is that it always holds back uh, around two stops of light by default. Which means then that if you want to shoot clear, for instance at night, that you have uh, to swap away the complete filter, which takes a lot of time. And by accommodating extra space above the full frame sensor, the filter is being able to be swapped away by a motorized stage and be fully clear without holding back any stops of light. By doing this, the DOP is capable of reducing the light from zero to seven stops inside the camera without having to buy any additional filters. There's another thing uh, which stands out from this new END format. Uh, the color science of the camera is capable 
of straightening up the colors over the full range of the ND spectrum. Kinfinity somehow found a way to place the ND filter not on the front of the OPF, but in between the OPF and the sensor. By implementing the ND filter in between the OPF filter and the sensor, the ND is not exposed to the elements. Yeah, and by putting the END in that location, the kin amount did not have to be changed, which means that the Mavo Edge is still compatible with the existing line of lens adapters. Another new feature which the Mavo Edge introduces are dual SDI, which can display independently from other video ports. We have a 1.5 and a 3G SDI, offering improved compatibility with monitors and other accessories. The signal from these dual SDI ports is 10 bits 422 YUV and includes metadata for trigger, timecode and embedded audio. Practically such a feature of having uh, two separate image processors for two SDI ports means that you for instance could display a REC 709 LUT on the viewfinder of the director of photography and then output a log file all the way to the monitor and the director then for instance can have a more creative LUT. Due to the dual image processor we are now able to have like the full overlay of the menus, for instance, on the EVF and a clean out to the director so the director is not anymore distracted by all your parameters of the, what the camera is doing. Next up, the Mavo Edge introduces a whole variety of new network interfaces. For one, we have a built-in H.264 streaming capability, which allows you to send a 1080p stream to an iOS device via the upcoming Kinefinity app. Alternatively, you could use its USB Type-C port to connect to iOS devices. This time, we also have a built-in Ethernet port and a built-in gyroscope, which allows you to label your footage with a geotag. At this moment, we are not completely sure how uh, Kinefinity is going to implement all these features in the camera. But of course we can see with all those future-proofed connections and connectivity, this camera has an extreme broad range of uh, possible uh, implications on set. For instance, let's start with the H.264 stream. Nowadays uh, film sets are mostly radio-based and people use very expensive transmitters and receivers to uh, broadcast um, the wireless video streams. Now with H.264 streaming capabilities we can simply stream um, a video file to all existing devices everyone has, like an iPhone or an iPad. Also Wi-Fi can give you the option to change all parameters of the camera without having to touch the camera. So the cinematographer can compose for the shot while the first AC is uh, dialing all the right settings in for the camera. With the built-in GPS recorder, we can record all the metadata of the rotational axis of the camera, like a gimbal is doing, and we could possibly uh, stabilize footage um, in post-production or help uh, an FX team with their match tracking of their shots. On top of the various interfaces and connectors and ports we just announced, there will be two high-speed expansion interfaces which can serve as a data channel and as a power supply. A further 5G expansion module will be announced later this year, which allows you to connect with a 5G, 4G dongle to a high-speed wireless public network. This will also allow you to further expand the camera's cloud capabilities and add more remote control and upgrade options to the camera. Next up, we have a whole array of new sync and trigger features which first of all is the GenLock, with it you can synchronize multiple cameras and it will also work together with different brands. We have the time code in and out, which allows for a more universal performance compared to previous camera models. Then of course we have a record trigger, master control, Bluetooth 5.0 for short distance communication and an open API, which allows third party manufacturers to create their own accessories for the Mavo Edge. Opposed to uh, previous Kinefinity camera models, where XLR audio connectors were offered as a separate uh, function through, for instance, the Kinebec W, this camera has all these audio functions integrated into one very small body. In this case, the sampling of the analog digital converter is even higher, all the way up to 24 bits, where in previous models that was only 16 bit. Also, the camera is capable of recording both the front 3.5mm connector 
and the two XLR um, connectors at the same time as four separate audio channels. Of course, the preamps of the XLR inputs are very high grade and they not only offer very low signal to noise ratios, but they also offer 48 volt phantom power, for instance, to power condenser mics. All right, so summing up, we have three different ways for audio input. We have the dual XLRs, the 3.5 millimeter jack microphone port, and the built-in mono microphone. And then, of course, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone port for audio monitoring. All right, next up, let's talk about power input. There are totally four different ways to power this camera. There's the V-mount, then there's the BPU-style batteries, we have NPF-style batteries, and of course, an AC adapter. V-mount and BPU are integrated in the camera body on the back, so nothing special here. The third option we mentioned through NPF 550 batteries is actually integrated into a camera base plate, which is part of a custom camera cage or shoulder rig by MoveCam. Here you will have two MPF 550 batteries in that plate, which will power the camera as a UPS, an uninterruptible power supply for hot swapping other batteries or to power the camera by itself. So whether you're a gimbal operator and you want to keep the camera down to minimum weight, for instance, using the DCN of the camera and uh, taking the battery outside the weight of the camera by, for instance, attaching it to your gimbal arms, or you're on a full feature film set working and continuous uptimes of the camera are meticulously important, this camera has it all. The Mavo Edge has a very low power consumption, tipping the scales at only 32 watt per hour. So for instance, with a BPU styled grip bed, um, you can power up the camera for around 60 minutes. Also, they highly increased the airflow volume up to 200% if we compare it to the existing uh, camera line like the Mavo LF. All right, on the output side of the power supply. The Mavo Edge also features various different ports. For one, we have a built-in DTAP, which puts out 14.8 volt. We have dedicated ports for follow focus motors. And of course, the before mentioned external ports for the upcoming modules, like the 5G module. Of course, the Mavo Edge will be entirely compatible with the existing line of monitors and the EVF. Here we see a few different setups. And of course, there are different adapters and rigging options to be released in the coming months. All right, there you have it, the Mavo Edge 8K, Kinefinity's new flagship cinema camera, a flexible, integrated, and intuitive system. The Mavo Edge is expected to be shipping late August 2020, and it will come in at 11,999 euros or dollars. Pre-orders are available right now from Kinefinity's website or local dealers. Now, before we go, a couple more things on power supply. Kinefinity will not only launch a brand new camera, but for this camera also a brand new line of grip buds. This time they're called the GripPad 2S, which are NPF 550 style batteries with an incredible high capacity of 3500 milliamperes or 25 watt hours. These batteries are not only high in capacity, but they're also high in current operation to be able to power that little beast, which is the Mavo Edge. Aside from the new batteries, there's a new hybrid PD fast charger. This will allow you to charge NPF style and BPU style batteries and it comes in in a weight of less than 100 grams. So, as an overview, this new hybrid charger can charge the GripBud 4S, which is the new name for the previously known GripBud 45 watt hours. It can charge only a single battery or dual batteries, and the power input is done through an USB-C type connector. It has incredibly fast charging times of one hour for a single GripBud 2S, or 1.8 hours for two GripBud 2S. You can even charge a GripBud 2S and a GripBud 4S at the same time without need of having to change any settings on the battery charger. And there you are, new batteries for a new camera from Kinefinity coming this year. All right, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had as much fun as we did. That was quite a lot of information to, to process. It's, I feel, I feel, I, feel, I myself feel maybe a little bit dizzy, but let's see what we just learned about this new 
camera called the Mavo Edge. So internal in D and uh, inside the camera, of course, deal breaker. Besides the improved image quality over the previous cameras, I think that this camera is even more than just image quality. It's also the thing which the previous cameras of Kinefinity were a bit lacking. On some film sets, they producers might say like, hmm, maybe we use that other German camera brand, which has uh, two like SDI clean out for the director. And I think with this camera, new camera release by Kinefinity, all those issues are tackled. And we have now a maturized um, camera that can withstand the bigger production. If, if we look at those uh, specs, of course, which stands out is the 8K sensor, which maybe is a little bit of an overkill for some. And of course, there's always this discussion of do I need 8K or do I even need 4K resolution? And my answer would kind of be the more you capture, the more you can do with it, the higher the color depth will be and the more organic images. And by using the full 8K sensor, you can always downsample it to lower resolutions, but you can not, never upscale a lower resolution sensor to higher resolutions. And of course, 8K has numerous applications, but you can crop into the sensor, you can achieve lower CO2 noise values by pixel binning, neighboring uh, pixels together. So 8K is the future and it's here to stay, I guess. Kinefinity is, has such a lot of knowledge to create such a stunning amount of features and technology in such a small body size. So with that knowledge and that legacy of knowing how to make a feature-rich camera inside a very small body, Kinefinity took it even uh, one step further and they thought like, why not? Why not putting all these functionalities, which we previously uh, added only through modular designs like the Kinebag W, and now just all include it, but make it not even that much larger and make it even lighter. So to round up, carbon fiber is another thing that Kinefinity really upped their game uh, and made a camera that's even lighter than the cameras before. And no one thought that could even be done. And now they even added more features. And of course, I want to um, round up this whole conclusion um, to thank um, Kinefinity for uh, making this camera available um, for, for us uh, cinematographers. Um, especially I want to think, uh, thank uh, Jiwa, uh, Jiwa Sheng for, uh, yeah, of course everyone knows him. He's, he's the CEO of Kinefinity who has worked uh, hours and hours to uh, yeah, get this camera yeah, to life and uh, his, his engineers and the whole team behind Kinefinity worked uh, hours and hours to uh, get this camera here and uh, yeah.